praise the Lord. And uh, one of the girls, if you can turn to 1 Corinthians 5 and be ready when I tell you to read, you read. And then another person would read Ephesians 6.12, whoever the first person. The first scripture is going to be Ephesians 6.12 and then um, for, uh, then Mark you will read Acts 5 and then whoever. So who is going to read Ephesians 6.12 for me? I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Although I'm speaking to a small group of people, Dave, we are going to edit once you give me the DVDs. Mm -hmm. We are going to edit and I'm going to compile these three days messages that I'm going on Jezebel and it's going to go to literally millions of people. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I did this study in Tamil and Sinhala, my first and the second languages. And in each of the languages, it was two hours. And uh, unknown to me, it was... No, um, can, can we have the sound now, now that it's after nine o'clock? Um, it's because of the session. Okay. I, I, will, I will talk loud. When I, when I start to preach, I will... I will, I will uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. This is the choir. Yeah, but um, what I'm saying is when I did that in Tamil and Sinhala, my first and the second languages, two hour studies in each, the CDs went uh, to many countries, including Sri Lanka, and it brought revival into many churches. Many pastors who were trying to divorce got reconciled with their wives. And then many pastors who are going to commit suicide got healed and restored. And many churches which were on the brink of break were healed. And you know what? The whole thing came back to my own city. And the churches there got together with the largest Bible college in Kandy. And they were doing spiritual warfare. And one of those uh, directors met me and said, hey, you know what? One of the pastors had been given tremendous insight into Jezebel, which has triggered a, an entire spiritual warfare team to start in Sri Lanka. And they have even gone into the high security zone in Sri Lanka to pray for the military and the paramilitary. And then I said, praise God. In my heart, I thought to myself, wow. So not only me, God has revealed this thing to somebody else also. So I said, come on, tell me some of those things. And when he said some of those things, I said, you know what, it's amazing because this is a very rare research that I had done. And, and, and it's amazing that somebody else has done that. And then he said, and uh, the main um, people of that uh, spiritual warfare team even went and met that pastor and they could get him only during the middle of the night. And I asked them, would that be three people? He said, yeah. And I said, I am that pastor. Because those people came to meet me in the middle of the night. And my own CDs on Jezebel had gone around and come back to my own city to prove. Do you know why? My, in my own city, I am not respected. If I go and tell my people that God revealed this to me, they would never take on board anything what I said. But look how it came back. So I'm telling you, so many people who, uh, English speaking people want me to do this. And also in my Revelation series, which I have uh, in the back, in the second book, right, I'm dealing with Jezebel from pages 138 to 158. That's 20 pages of dealings with Jezebel in relation to one of the churches in the book of Revelation. And that's uh, the entire chapter 21 of the second book. Okay, For those of you who did not get this series, please get it at the back. It's only 10 pounds. The, the whole three books are 10 pounds. But I told if you are finding it difficult to pay that money, no problem. Let's negotiate <laughs> because I would like to give those books free but it's not me although I'm the author it's done by our college so uh, the, 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 the sales department belongs to the college and I can't give it free although I like to do that and if I give it free to somebody I have to replace that money for the college that is why <laughs> I'm being very nasty this time <sighs> but with my Old Testament prophets I didn't do that didn't I I don't know 
Now this is it. I'm going to pray and start, right? So shall we all pray at this moment? Yahweh Yeshua Mashiach. God, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you are. And for what you have done in our lives. Father, we know that the devil is a defeated foe. And we are not just victorious or conquerors. We are more than conquerors. And we thank you Lord for making us your people and your children. And giving us that victory. And within that victorious Christian life. We don't want to defeat the devil anymore because he is already a defeated foe. We want to just remind the devil that he is defeated. And we want to revel in that victory you have given us Lord. And in all these we give glory and honor to you. Father I commit these dear people who are listening to me right now in this hall in Scotland, in Perth. And also for those people Lord who are going to listen to this over the DVDs or audio CDs. I pray that you would minister your word to these people and show them that Jezebel as big as he is, is nothing. But a defeated foe in the presence of Jesus who lives in us. And this I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I started this prayer by saying Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah. If you translate those Hebrew terms into Greek, that will be Kurios, Jesus, Christos. The common manner in which Jesus is known in the New Testament. And if you translate those Greek terms, Kurios, Jesus, Christos, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, into Hebrew, it's Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah. And Yahweh is what you in English call Jehovah. So Jesus is called Jehovah in the New Testament. And he is nothing but God. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to teach you something about the spirit of Jezebel. Now we know the term because after a story of a woman who got married to an Israelite king, this name became famous among Jews and then the Christians. But today, I want to explain certain things as to many questions Christians have about Jezebel. And the, the two most erroneous views that Christians have about Jezebel is that it is a feminine spirit and that it works only among women. Now they are wrong. Since angels are asexual beings, meaning they are neither male nor female, the spirit which took upon itself the name Jezebel is also asexual. So it's neither man nor woman. Now when we say that spirit is neither male nor female, it means that that, that spirit works either in and through males or in and through females. And therefore we cannot just say that only the dear old ladies are vulnerable to the attacks of Jezebel. We men must be equally careful of this spirit. Now, now, now I want you all to understand me very cl clearly. The way I want us to be careful of spirit of Jezebel is not anything to do with fear. We don't need to be careful about Jezebel by being afraid of it. We have to be careful with that spirit lest we entertain that dirty ugliness to be where we are because we are holy people. Now saying we are holy people doesn't mean that we are having no weaknesses. That we don't have problems and maladies in our lives. We are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in our Christian walk. But it is 
us who are called holy people because by definition holy means separated from the world and separated unto God. We are separated from the word, world and we are separated unto God. Now let's go to talk about this Jezebel. Now in the evil hierarchy we must understand who we are dealing with. We are dealing with an ex-angel who did not have a name. Now don't tell me that the name of that angel which fell is Lucifer. That's a Latin term to denote the, uh, the, the morning star. Right? Even Jesus at times was called the morning star. And even some of the Christians are called the morning star. I have explained them in the books of uh, books that you find there. And those of you who have got my books, please start reading it. Because these are the kind of things that I have gone down. It's not another commentary on Revelation. It's different, right? You're going to have fun. And that's why I have made them real small for you to take it in the train or the car. And you know, sit in the park and read. And just, you know, take on board what the Holy Spirit has given you through me. Okay? Now, this, the, 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 this ex-angel fell. Now let's not get into that sort of thing because that is not within my scope today. And became what we know as Satan. Satan in, uh, in Hebrew and Satanes in Greek mean adversary. Diabolos. In Greek, adversary. The one who opposed God. You know, the devil is not our enemy. He is God's enemy. And because we belong to God, we have become the devil's enemy. This is a triangle, okay? There is God up there. We belong to God. And God discarded the devil. Can you see that V upside down? The letter V upside down. We are received by God and God expels Satan from his presence. Okay? So there is no connection between us and the Satan. So when we became God's people and God's property, the devil was discarded down and he wanted to make that link with us. That horizontal line that connects that upside down V to make it a triangle. Can you see that? And the devil wants to extend his communication to humankind and that's what he did in the Garden of Eden. And he succeeded doing that. And now the triangle is there. So some people... Run horizontally, horizontally between themselves, egocentricity, egocentricism and Satan, Satanism, right? And some people try to link the, the other two lines from God to Satan saying God and Satan or to be more precise, Jesus and Satan were brothers and all that kind of nonsense. Are you familiar with that? Satanism, Right? But the only connection is between God and us. The vertical connection. God has accepted us to become his children. Praise God for that. And our communication is vertical, not horizontal with Satan. And he would want to come behind us. He would want to come after us. He would want to join that broken link. Okay? We once belonged to Satan in that we were horizontally linked with him. But that yoke was broken by Jesus and that line is no longer there. It is erased permanently. It's not just uh, tipexed. It's erased. And a new line of communication is formed between us and God. Now we belong to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited about that? But the devil will come behind us. And do you know how the devil will come? Because the devil is not smart as we think. Because he is not powerful as we think. 
And because he is nothing, the way he shows to people, he is absolutely nothing. He wants to counterfeit God. He wants to show that he also has stuff. So if you ask me, I would tell you that there are miracles in the demonic realm. There are signs and wonders in the demonic realm. The devil also does performs miracles and does so many things that God does in order to deceive the people. But what he can, cannot do are two things. He cannot forgive the sins and he cannot give us eternal life. And that's the difference between the miracles Jesus does and the Satan does. Jesus does miracles and he does the greatest miracles of forgiving our sins and taking us to heaven because he is the door. He is the door. He is the way and he is the truth. Amen? To heaven. Now what happens is the devil wants to act like God. But God is a trinity that we know. Now we may not find the word trinity in the Bible. Don't get perturbed over that. The trinity is very much present in the Bible. Don't try to understand trinity because I can't understand trinity. Why? Because as long as I am finite, I will not be able to comprehend that which is infinite. But not that I am saying I will never find out. I will find out when I go up there. And I am in no hurry to find that out. Because I have something to do down on this earth on behalf of my Lord. So don't try to, try to understand Trinity. You know, don't try to bring examples of the sun, the rays and the heat. Of the flower, the color and its fragrance. Of the water, ice and the steam. You know, don't try to bring examples of the triune God into these finite objects. It doesn't work. It will lead you into heretic theology. Okay? So leave the Trinity alone. Don't try to understand it. But there is somebody who has not left that Trinity alone. The Satan. He also likes to work in a trinity. But the poor fellow is just one fellow. He can't be one Satan in three persons. Whereas our God is one God in three persons. The names Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are given. They are anthropomorphic expressions for us to understand. Right? But they are not names. God doesn't have names. You know that? On Mount uh, Horeb, uh, this guy Moses goes and then he sees this uh, fire uh, of the burning bush and then he asks this God who was now speaking to Moses, excuse me sir, what's your name? And he says in Hebrew, Chaya. That's it. Chaya. Meaning, why name? There is only one of me. If there are two gods, then I must give you a name saying, you know, I am this chap and not that. But he says, Chaya. Which was translated by the Greek translators, Ego Amy, since they could not find that one word in Greek that would correspond to the Hebrew Chaya. They brought two words mentioning Ego Amy, meaning I am. Now God doesn't have names and yet he is three persons. And that's why we don't understand because I am Suresh and I am one person. Now I can't be Suresh and standing here preaching while I live in Sri Lanka. I can't do that. I have to fly 12 non-stop hours into Colombo before I am I, I'm in Sri Lanka. Whereas God is not only omnipresent, he is also in three persons. So the devil has chosen three persons. One, the devil himself. And two others. Maybe uh, two of the highest angels which fell with him. Okay, And three of them got together and formed an evil trinity. A counterfeit trinity. 
the big guy calls himself Jezebel. The second guy in the evil trinity is called Antichrist because the second person of the trinity is Christ. Okay? See the correspondence there? Then the third guy is called death and hell because the third person in the trinity gives life. The Holy Spirit is the holy life. The Holy Spirit's life with which we are born, okay? Because we are born of the Spirit. So, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is one God. But Jezebel, Antichrist and the death and hell are three evil spirits. Jezebel being the boss. Now these are main angels that are functioning which will eventually come down to earth and becoming rulers of the last three Babylons that are going to come in the last days. The religious Babylon, the commercial Babylon and the political Babylon. Now you got to wait till my commentary comes out on Revelation 17 and 18 before the three Babylons are discussed. And I don't know whether I am correct Dave but as far as my research is concerned, I'm the only fellow who has discovered that there are going to be three Babylons. Because the maximum the scholars, eschatological scholars have come up is two Babylons. But what I find in the book of Revelation and the great study that I had done on Babylonology, which is going to appear in another teaching, right, is that there are going to be three Babylons in the last days. And the three demons or three satans are going to be the three antichrists in the last days. The political antichrist, the commercial antichrist and the religious antichrist. So let's wait for that, okay? Let's get down to Jezebel. So today we are going to talk about Jezebel. And these three big chaps are operating in the world, not directly, but indirect, indirectly through their other angels, which we call demons. And that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 12, and uh, chapter 6 and verse 12. And who is my reader there? Sheila. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Why then did Paul not talk about the spirits of Jezebel, Antichrist and death and hell? Because Paul in the Ephesian context is talking about wrestling. We don't wrestle with Jezebel, Antichrist and death and hell. Do you know why? Because those three spirits are intelligent spirits. They don't come to fight us. I'm, I'm going to explain those things during the course of this study. They don't come to fight us. They come to deceive us. Because they are too clever to know that they cannot fight us. That's why the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of death and hell, I repeatedly tell you this is being recorded, will not come to the Christian to fight. Because those spirits are so clever, they know that they cannot fight the Christians. Because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world, says the word. And the best person who knows the Bible inside out is Satan himself. He not only knows the Bible, he is a believer of the Bible. He knows what the Bible says is true. So those spirits don't come to fight us. They come to deceive us. But who will come to fight us? The small demons who are foolish. The principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are the demons which would oppress people, suppress people, possess people and all that kind of stuff. If you come to my part of the world, Asian countries, you will see many people demonized. Those 
spirits are not the spirits of Jezebel, Antichrist, or death, death and hell. These are the smaller ones. But in these four categories, the top on the list who receive commands from Jezebel, Antichrist, and death and hell would be the principalities. Under them, powers. Under them, uh, rulers of darkness of this world who are the executors of, of the uh, commands given by their superiors. And the final four, the, 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 uh, the, the marine core, if you, if you like, would be the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Now, if the devil can deceive somebody and achieve his purpose by using the least of his demons, the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, that's where he'll stop. So in countries like Sri Lanka and in India, where the literacy rate is low, where people are so engrossed in idol worship and, and many other things, where people have to wrestle with poverty and their day-to-day -day lives, the devil achieves his purposes by using these soldiers of demons. So, the smallest spiritual wickedness in heavenly places can go into these homes of people, possess them or cause problems to them and keep them away from God. Can you see this point? But if those people cannot be targeted by the devil by using these small soldiers, he then will send the others who are a little bit more powerful than the spiritual wickedness of the heavenly places, which will be rulers of darkness of this world. If he couldn't achieve through them, then he will send powers. And then if he couldn't achieve through the powers, which would be a very rare thing, then the principalities would come. And without going into such demonological elucidations, Jesus at one point told his disciples, Hey guys, you know what? These kinds of demons will not go unless you really fast and pray. And you know that verse, don't you? So that shows you that Jesus himself showed a specific category of demons. But also Jesus encountered some of the stupid demons who asked Jesus, you know what Lord, can you send us down to the pigs? Now you wouldn't expect a knowledgeable, clever Satan to act like that, would you? Because Ezekiel chapter 28 says that he was full of, in full wisdom. He was full of wisdom. So, in today's study, what I'm trying to show you is this. The satanic hierarchy goes like this. Jezebel in the top. Antichrist and death and hell on, say, Jezebel's right hand side and the left hand side. And they are not living in the, on the earth. They don't have to. But they, they do things through the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world. And spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And if you my dear Christians. If you can stop going to church. And stop reading the word. And get perturbed and disturbed. And get upset over minor issues. The devil is not going to send Jezebel to you. All he needs is the tiniest of demons. Right? And when you grow. You will find some, some demon which is much more powerful. In your Christian walk, my brothers and sisters, as soon as you get saved, all your prayers are answered. All you have to shout is hallelujah and God blesses you. In the early days of your Christian walk, you seem to be victorious over the devil. But when time goes on, you will find the attacks more severe and you will begin to feel, you will begin to feel that you are losing power. No, that's a lie that tells you that you have now gained grounds by, by nullifying the ground force and now the helicopters are coming against you. So when you know in your Christian walk that the problems are escalating, 
All you have to do is to ask your Lord to give you more powerful weapons. So now Lord with the little shotgun, I shot these little demons away. But can you give me an AK-47 please? <laughs> and if you are good at your AK-47, you will have to ask for rocket launchers and anti-air missiles, ground to air missiles sooner in your life. So you can choose to be one of either. Either you can be downhearted saying, Is this every day in my life? Am I going to fight and fight and fight? Look, the problems are escalating. And run away. Or are you going to say, Praise the Lord, I have kicked out the small fellows. Now I am going for the big fellows. Hey, Dave, you know what? Problems are greater now. Why? Because I am now attacking greater enemies. Now, this is true. This is true. And then it goes, it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it grows. After I finished my Singhala and Tamil teachings on Jezebel, one day I woke up breathless. I was not breathing. To cut a long story short, who came and stood next to me? Jezebel. And Jezebel came and told me that since he can't, I'm going to explain to you why I call Jezebel he, okay? Why he can't kill me, but now I'm going to die, he's going to enjoy. I had a little food particle got stuck in my throat and you know, that was a practical, no, that was a physical problem. A real problem that had nothing to do with satans or demons. I ate an apple and before it digested I slept. So that piece got stuck and you know I had a real physical problem. But Jezebel now comes and the Jezebel says, Hey Suresh you are going to die, I am going to enjoy because I can't touch you, I can't kill you. I didn't choose to say, Oh no, Jezebel! Ooh. I said okay, so you are now coming after me. huh? All your... Inferiors are gone. Huh? All, your, all your subjects are gone. Now you are there. Okay, let's have a go. Let's have a go. Right? So I started to have a go with Jezebel and now the English city is coming up. See what I mean? See what I mean? You learn this please for heaven's sake. So don't complain of your problems. Don't complain of your illnesses. Don't complain that once upon a time they ripped you off for thousand pounds. Now they want to rip you off for one hundred thousand pounds. Now you must dance and jump and say, those days it was thousand, now it's hundred thousand. Oh, I'm longing to see the day when they want to rip me off for one million pounds. Am I talking sense here? Okay, am I talking the Bible here? Spiritual warfare, we got to understand. We got to understand the enemy before we can fight the enemy. Right? So, Paul says, we don't wrestle with Jezebel, Antichrist and death and hell because they don't come to wrestle with us. They send these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places to wrestle with us. So, those are the fellows who come and try to strangle us, you know, come and try to rob us, you know. All that kind of nonsense. <laughs> Okay, now let's go to the other section of our study here. Let's start with the name Jezebel. The reason why we put a name to this spirit is because we first encountered this spirit in a person called Jezebel in the Bible. This woman was a Phoenician woman from Sidon, daughter of a king of Sidon. And she married an Israelite king called Ahab and came to Israel. She was influenced by a spirit which has always been there ever since God created it. And that is why after that woman's story we call that spirit Jezebel. Not to say that the spirit of Jezebel began there. The spirit of Jezebel has been there. 
But we didn't have a name. You know, if you if you if you look at the Old Testament, the men of God of the Old Testament truly struggled to put a name to this fellow. That's why when Ezekiel was there in Babylon and when God wanted to speak to Ezekiel about Satan, he said, the king of Tyre. Why? Because in Ezekiel's day, the most evil ruler that they had in that area was the ruler of Tyre, the country called Tyre. And a little after that, when Daniel, actually, or a little before that, when Daniel uh, was fasting and praying in chapter 10 of his book for 21 days, the angel Gabriel comes. Gabriel in English. And Gabriel tells him, hey, you know what? I came the first day you began to pray. But on my way, I had to fight somebody. And that somebody was the prince of Persia. So the te term prince of Persia was to connote Satan. Because Daniel didn't know any other name. Ezekiel didn't know any other name for Satan, so it was the ruler of Tyre. If Daniel lived in 1941, Gabriel would have said, I came 21 days ago, but Adolf Hitler stopped me. See what I mean? The Fuhrer of Germany. You know, he would have said, the Fuhrer of Germany. But if, if, if he came in the 1970s, he would have said, the ruler of Uganda, Idi Amin withstood me. Or in the 1990s, Saddam Hussein stopped me when I brought the message from for you, Daniel. See what I mean? So, because they didn't have a name. And that is why, in the pre-Jezebel era, the spirit of Jezebel existed. But we didn't know how to call that spirit. But then came Jezebel, the, the, the best candidate for the spirit of Jezebel to operate through. We now have a name. So by looking at the life of the woman Jezebel, we can learn a lot of things. Now let me start with the name. Etymology of the name Jezebel. Do you know, the name has meanings in the Old Testament. Right? Yaakov, Jacob in English, means supplanter, deceiver. He lived to, to that name. Abram became Avraham. Father of people, father of nation. And people's names were changed accordingly. And therefore we need to learn the meaning of the name Jezebel. And I'll tell you something. I have done loads of researches on names and this is the only name that has multiple meanings which contradict with each other you if you have multiple meanings they should supplement the meanings right if you, if, if one meaning says beautiful the other name should say uh, wonderful or something like that you cannot have a name the same name meaning beautiful and ugly But Jezebel has four meanings. And I'm going to share those meanings to you. Why four meanings? Because she was a Syro... She, she was actually a Phoenician person, right? And it was yes, Abel in the Phoenician language. In Hebrew, it's yes, Abel. Okay? Yes, Abel. So these different meanings are going to be very important for us. The first meaning is chaste or loving kindness. The name Jezebel means loving kindness. And this spirit lives to the meaning of the name. Loving kindness. 
And if you look at the life of Jezebel and Ahab, this woman showed love and kindness to Ahab. That's why he did not divorce his wife until he died. Those days kings could just throw the wife away and get another one. But this fellow lived with this woman till he died. And subsequent to his death, this woman ruled for 10 years in that nation. Why do you think even after the great ordeal they had on Mount Carmel with Elijah, they allowed Jezebel to continue because she was a loving, kind person. Okay? And she was also loving and kind to her prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth because she gave food to them on her table. The Bible says that these prophets ate at Jezebel's table. So for them, she was a loving and kind person. Okay? And the Jezebel spirit lives up to the name even today. And in coming into churches, this spirit brings false love and false kindness. Who is the full manifestation of love? Jesus is. For God so loved the world... That he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but hath everlasting life. Hey, what more love can you show me from any book or any person's biography? It's God who is love. And it's, if it is not for God's kindness, we would not be here. And the total manifestation of love and kindness are the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And inside a church, you don't have to have love and kindness because the church is founded on love and kindness. The church became a church because of God's love and God's kindness. So you don't have to bring, you don't have to import love and kindness from the outside. But Jezebel comes and shows the people that the churches need to have love and kindness. What happens is this. The ministers become loving and kind. So if somebody lives in immorality, they love these people too much to condemn that act. If there is a sin in the church, people are afraid to address the sin because they love the sinner too much. And they want to love the sinner more than Jesus did. But Jesus is the only person who died. For the sins of mankind. But there is this false kind of love and kindness in the church. Which allows the sinners to dwell in their sins. Why? Because people will get hurt. People will get hurt. In a church, the Jezebel spirit has brought these things. You can't hurt people anymore. You can't hurt people. Pastors can't hurt believers. Elders can't hurt believers. And now hurt has no definition. So it is relative. It depends on the person. If the person thinks that the person is hurt, it is taken for granted. So if my nose perturbs Marjorie, I have to do something about my nose because she is hurt. See what I mean? The way I speak hurts Margaret. I need to change. And the word of God hurts. What's your name brother? James. And the word also is changed. And a new translation is given to James. James. Which soothes him. Which pleases him. Love. Kindness. Sooner or later Mark. You will find a, 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 a version. Called the loving kindness version of the Bible. <laughs> but now you know. I know. But now you know. But now you know. 
If you translate that back into Phoenician, it means Jezebel. See what I mean? So, Jezebel means loving kindness. Mark, I want you to read this passage that I told you to read, please. Come on up here. Come on up here and read. Yeah. It's from Acts chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it or giving her permission to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours afterwards that his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt or to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth buried her by her husband. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so Mark read from the Old Testament of the Bible when people were living under the law, not under the grace. Was it correct? Is it correct? Where did Mark read from? The New Testament. You know the church was born in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 was when the church was born. And Acts chapter 6, that's a chapter later. That deacons were appointed in the church, remember? And here is a church which has even no deacons, no elders. The church is new, so the people need to learn theology. Not many of those people were still baptized in water. It's a juvenile church. A young, immature church pastored by a man called Peter who did not have a PhD or, or even a master's, right? And, and this is in the New Testament. So, there are all the reasons for us to condemn what happened on that day. Come on God, why didn't you give the new believer Ananias a chance? And then you know, the wife misses Ananias, Sapphira. Sapphira was doing shopping, Dave. <laughs> Poor lady, she comes three hours later. All she did was, she said, yeah, to when Pastor Peter said, did you sell this for that amount? And obviously Ananias and Sapphira had agreed to tell the church something. And it's Pastor Peter who is saying, uh, Sapphira, your husband was here a minute ago. Uh, he says that you sold your property for a certain number of amount of pounds. Is that true? And she said, mm-hmm. And for saying, mm-hmm, she fell down and died. Where is grace of the New Testament? Where is loving kindness of God in the New Testament? God says, I am love and I am kindness. But don't mess with me. Don't play the fool with me. And if there was somebody there. If there was somebody who said, Pastor Peter. You should have given a chance to Ananias and Sapphira. You should have taken them onto a counseling program before you chastised them. Or you should have referred to them to the council of apostles in Jerusalem, headed by James. If anybody said that, that somebody would be none other than Jezebel. Praise God, in Acts chapter 5, there was no Jezebel in the church. Now, what about the 21st century church? What about the 21st century church? 
oh that was Peter he didn't know his theology Paul knew his theology well so Paul is the theologian okay who is the next one who is going to read 1st Corinthians chapter 5 for me the first few verses yes who is that 1st Corinthians chapter 5 Paul is writing to the Corinthians come on the first verse 1st Corinthians are you going to read yes it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Okay, and the next verse? And we are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. My goodness! Paul is saying somebody is living in sexual immorality and you have not yet chased him out of the church <laughs> I think Paul will commit suicide if he comes to the 21st century and walked into our churches where homosexuals can even be ministers let alone be believers right now you can't address those issues here right you can't even address those issues I think Dave was telling me yesterday when we were coming that somebody was almost arrested here when he was uh, preaching the gospel in a gay rally Stephen Green was arrested praise God for that praise God for that but hang on a minute hang on a minute what does Paul say is Paul an Old Testament prophet all of a sudden he is a New Testament theologian so if Peter could do what he did in Acts chapter 5 if Paul could do what he uh, did in uh, 1st Corinthians chapter 5 is God upset is God no longer love is God no longer kind I'll tell you God is love and God is kind and that's why we are here but the false kind of love and kindness is brought into the church by Jezebel because her name means loving kindness okay here is another meaning the second meaning for Jezebel is where is the prince <coughs> that, that, that's interesting right yes of El means where is the prince where is the prince hey this is very tricky you know we are kings after we became Christians and we are seated with Christ even now we don't have to wait till we are dead to go up and sit with Christ we are seated with him right now aren't we we are kings but he is the king of kings he is the king of kings who are those kings we he is our kings king we are the kings he is the king of kings praise God for that and we are kings and therefore we don't have to worry about wearing a throne and wearing a crown and seating seated on a throne whether we sit on a throne or whether we are in our dilapidated houses we are kings but Jezebel will come and speak to us saying where is that prince in you show your colors show your talents show them who you are how dare they speak to you like that how dare they say things like that to you you show them who you are pride 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 can you see that now as Christians we don't need to ask the question as to where is the king in myself I'm the king in your life you are the king but you have the king of kings who is Jesus but you are all kings so we don't need to question our kingship because we believe in the Bible and the Bible says so we are a royal priesthood we are a holy generation right we are all what the Bible says who we are but the Jezebel will come and plant that question into us saying if you are the king hey didn't he do that with Jesus himself Jesus was coming after a 40 day fast and Satan comes and says if you are the son of God so that's Jezebel right now you see that's Jezebel the meaning of the name where is the prince 
So when Sheila, you have your illnesses, it will be Jezebel who will come and speak to your mind uh, saying, where is that anointing in you? Are you a prophetess, Margaret Dransfield? Where is your anointing? Where was your anointing when you fell and broke your leg? Ah. See, see, see. Pride. Questioning. Questioning our own position in God. Are you sure about your salvation, James? Are you sure that you came and told me yesterday that you don't speak in tongues? Now that very issue can be an issue of Jezebel and she'll, the, the, the spirit of Jezebel will uh, come to you saying, now that you don't speak in tongues, I don't think you are a good Christian girl. Is the Lord speaking to you? Is the Lord speaking to you? Don't listen to Jezebel. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. If the word of God says we are kings, we don't need to be princes. We are more than princes. We are kings. But the Jezebel will come and ask you, where is your position in the church? Why, why, why do you let others say these things to you? Show who you are. We don't have to show who we are. Because the demonic forces know who we are. It's only if they don't know that we have to show them. And if you're going to show your colors, you can show only to people. But what can poor people do? One day they'll say good morning to you, the next day they'll turn your face from you. It depends on their personality and their problems. So don't worry, worry about the people. Just say as to what God thinks about you. But that's pride. But look at the other meaning. That's very ironic. The third meaning is not exalted. One of the meanings is, where is the prince? You know, exalted. Pride. And the other meaning is, not exalted. And that's false humility. Jezebel, who brings pride, you know, I must say something about this pride before we go to the next one. Sorry about this. You know, pride is not an easy thing. It brings God down to earth. Because God says, the Bible says, God resists the proud. He doesn't say that he would send angels to resist the proud. He will come. So the only way you can get God to come before you, not in a loving manner, but in a resisting manner, is to be proud. Pride is such evil. And Jezebel wants you to be proud. Yes, and pride goeth before destruction. So, you know how Jezebel works. Now, the other meaning, as I said, is not exalted. You know, a false kind of humility. Where the same spirit, on the one hand, will use to trigger your pride, will also show you as a worm in the presence of God. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Me? Me? Am I going to share? No. Am I going to sing for the Lord? No. Hey. See the irony there? The f despondent feeling. A false kind of despondency. I can't do anything. The Bible says I can do everything through Christ who enables me, empowers me. But the devil will tell, Jezebel will tell you, you can't do anything. So, the pride and the false humility. It's amazing, it's, isn't it? The, the same name. Jezebel means all these. And finally, the, the fourth meaning, I'm going to stop after uh, explaining the meaning and I'm going to continue tomorrow. Very strange. The fourth meaning is husbandlessness husbandlessness no husband I'll tell you something you won't now if I ask you of a young girl a, a, a young girl say of, of the marital age perhaps but if she, if she is not married if I ask you 
uh, can you introduce this girl to me? You wouldn't say, well, her name is, she is so and so, and she doesn't have a husband. You wouldn't say that, would you? You wouldn't say that. If I ask you, where is her husband? Then you would say, no, she's not married. You would say of a woman, husbandless, only on two accounts. One, she is either widowed, the husband has died, or they are divorced or separated. Which means she has had a husband at some point, and now she doesn't have that husband, whether by death or by separation, right? So the meaning of the term Jezebel is husbandlessness, not spinster. Okay, not spinster. Husbandlessness. Which means she has a husband, but she doesn't have a husband. So this is this. The, Je the spirit of Jezebel knows that we Christians have a bridegroom. Jesus. The husband, the Bible says, is the head. And Jesus is our head because we are the church. Whether you are the Presbyterian church or the Sumterian church or Sanitarian church or I don't care. Right? <laughs> Cemetery church or whatever. The head of the church is Jesus. So there are now Christians who are influenced by Jezebel who would say, I belong to a church. In that they say, I belong to the body. But then when it comes to Jesus, they would, they would behave the Jesus as though Jesus is not their head. Can you see that trick? The subtlety of this? Husbandlessness. So I have a head in theory, but we are separated. Jesus and I are separated. I don't... Hey, Mark, I'm hitting your sermon point, man. I have not surrendered to the head. Why should I? <laughs> See that point? And people, these people would not only obey Jesus, their leader, they wouldn't even obey the true leadership of the church. The Christ ordained leadership of the church. The apostolic leadership. The pastoral leadership. The didactic leadership or the teaching leadership. You know, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'm going to touch the teaching aspect as to how Jezebel works. Right? But for those who are listening uh, through DVD, you, you, you can continue. Right? But what I'm saying is, the disobedience to proper biblical leadership. Now I'm going to ask a wonderful question from you. In my Old Testament book, I have mentioned about dreams, visions, and Christophany. I don't know whether you came across that. How does Jesus manifest himself now? Through the word of God. Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. He is the living word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Any Christian who disobeys the word for any good reason is husbandless. One of the ways Jezebel works is by making people disobey the word of God with all the good reasons. Well, I didn't know the Bible said so is one of the innocent reasons. Ananias could have told that to Peter. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, before you kill me, wait, wait a minute. I didn't know that we are not supposed to lie. <laughs> no. Can you see that? So I didn't know thing. So when God has given you a wonderful word of God in your language, just like Mark explained. You English speaking people have got this wonderful translation. Now why can't God speak to you through that? How can you say you didn't know something? Perhaps you were sleeping in front of your telly when that word was preached in the church. Perhaps you were playing golf on that Sunday when that particular thing was preached in the church. Perhaps you were watching some pornography in the television when that sermon was preached in God's channel. See what I mean? God has not gone dumb. 
he is still speaking. And if we didn't know something, that's our problem. Just because we don't know and we took poison, it's not going to say, let us live. Just because we drank it without knowing it was poison, it's going to kill us. And so, the word of God is something that we need to learn. We need to seek after. We need to study. Study first to show thyself approved unto God. A workman who needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study is a command given to every Christian. And if you didn't know something... That's your problem. So you better start learning the word. I was a Hindu and I became a Christian. Yesterday I shared a little bit about my testimony. And I come from a Buddhist country. And I'll tell you something. If I know to obey God, if I know the word, you ought to know the word more than I do. Excuse me, but shame on you. I'm talking to so-called Christian people living in Christian nations. You brought Christianity to me. You brought Christianity to me in my country. And today we are coming back to your nation. And we don't see the word of God here. And it rips my heart. When I first came to UK in 93. That was 13 years ago. I thought I came to a Christian country. But lo and behold. I came to a very heathen pagan country and I'm coming back I'm coming back and coming back to rekindle that fire yes, along with these saints along with these fiery preachers whom God has called so, yeah and we need to make the word known as it is because the Jezebel spirit Jezebel has robbed the word has robbed the word because the word is Christ manifested. So to disobey the word is to live a widow's life. Many Christians are living a widow's die life because their Christ is dead. And for many Christians in this nation, their Christ is separated from them. So they are living a divorced Christian life. And that's why they have to go behind Freemasonry. They have to go behind occultism. They have to go behind witchcraft. They have to, and I have no problem mentioning these things. I don't care even if witches and mm, who, who else? Masons, anybody come. I like to go face to face with those creatures in the name of Jesus. But those Christians, but those Christians must be very careful because they're dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. There, I stop. And tomorrow, I'm going to start by saying, how does the spirit of Jezebel enter into individuals, families, societies, and churches? Come prepared for that. Was that just about the most awesome word I have heard, I'm sure you have heard, on Jezebel? Praise the Lord. Are you tired? No, sir. <laughs> well, I am. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but when it comes to ministering the word of God, all my tiredness fly, flies away. Before I start on Jezebel, I promised on the first day uh, that I will continue a little bit on my testimony. Right now, this wouldn't come on the Jezebel CD, uh, DVD, Dave. Uh, how many of you all were there on the first day? You, ah, you, you. So only two people know how I became a Christian, right? Either ask them or watch the DVD. Because I, I cannot go over that again, you know, how I became a Christian from being a Hindu priest and how I was persecuted by my own mother and just before minutes before I died, how God saved me. And that was way back in 1979. Now I told you that even before I knew that Father, Son and the Holy Spirit existed, I spoke in tongues, you know. 
and I told how I laid my hands on people and they began to receive the uh, gifts and that's why the University of Manchester and these scholars could not tell me and prove to me that the Holy Spirit speaking of tongues is only for the apostolic early apostolic age and not for this epoch right now uh, after a few years in fact I I preached my first sermon during a communion service proper proper sermon when I was 13 years old and I was casting demons out and I was praying for the sick and seeing sick people healed when I was 11 years old that was when I became a Christian and at the age of 18 I was the senior pastor of three churches right and uh, today I'm training young people to become pastors and boy I'll tell you I'm going all over the world to many many countries and uh, when I uh, when I see people of 18 years of age you know I'm appalled to see them you know like for me they're like five-year-olds because when I was 18 I was a senior pastor not just a pastor I was a senior pastor of three churches so now I'm just 38 now uh, that uh, brings me to the 20th year of uh, my ministry and I want to tell you how God chose me as a special vessel in Sri Lanka I am the only I would say the first century type apostle in Sri Lanka oh, yes. right uh, and I'm not proud about it I'm shocked about it to say why God has chosen a worm like me and has exalted me to become God's representative in that country and we are persecuted in a very big way in Sri Lanka and I think I told a little bit of that but I'll tell you how I was able to start some churches those days I would take a little briefcase uh, a little black briefcase and I would fill that briefcase with leaves from various trees right green and brown leaves and then I would borrow from somebody these little bottles that they used to use injection medication, you know. Do you remember those good old b little bottles which contained the medication for injections? And after they uh, suck the medicine out, they discard these little bottles. Now I borrow them, in fact, I have to borrow them, otherwise I, I have to buy them, I can't afford to buy, so I borrow about 20 to 30 of those bottles and I, I, I put sand uh, of different colors right into those and then I would uh, very neatly place them inside the briefcase with all those green leaves and then I will have some tracts right on the side and I would open that briefcase in uh, crowded bus stands in Sri Lanka bus stations and then I would I had a little horn you know and I would just scream and yell and say hey if you have a headache if you have a fever if you have a stomach ache come come i have some free medication and i'll get i'll get 70 80 100 people come and encircle me and then afterwards i uh, preach the gospel to them i talk to them about jesus and i give those leaflets free you know those bottles and the leaves are just to attract the people right but what i give are the tracks and sometimes they chase me and I have to carry these and run for my life. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I'm challenged. Most of the time I'm challenged. You know, they, they would bring a dumb, deaf, or mute or, or, or a crippled person and they would ask me to pray. And, and when I pray, this, these people get healed. And that's how these churches were started. Now, let me not go into that. I'm going to tell you about a certain church that was started. I can't, I don't know to teach children. You know, even if you get me four-year-olds, five-year-olds, I'll be talking theology to them. Uh -huh. So, once I was in this, um, well, one day when I was praying, the Lord gave me a date. He wanted me to open the diary of mine, which I did randomly. And uh, this day I will give you a church in, say, this place, right? Um, God gave me the name of the place and the date. So I just jotted it down and I forgot all about it. And that was the day when I was just in a in the middle of the jungle in a very remote estate, tea estate, among very poor people. And I was I had these four or five little children come to see the man wearing trousers, you know, which I used to the uh, to, to attract them and make them sit and I was talking to them about Jesus. A am I talking uh, 
for you to understand? Uh, do you understand me? Or yes, yes, uh? yes. Okay, because you are sc Scottish and I'm speaking English. Right. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> with a Sri Lankan accent. So, I was talking uh, about Jesus to these young uh, children and you know, as I told you, I don't know how to talk to children. So I was talking about Jesus as though unto some adults. And there was this drunkard, full of booze, you know, he was intoxicant to the max. And he was standing there and watching me talk about Jesus to the little children. And he, you know, he said, hey, you, so you say that your God is bigger than my God. I said, no, I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking about you, I, let me just do my thing with these children. He said, no, 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 how dare you talk bad about my God, my God is big. I said, if, God, if your God is big to you, keep that God. My God is big to me, for heaven's sake, leave me alone, I'm teaching these children. But he wouldn't. He, I had annoyed him, you know. I had offended him big time. I had made him believe that my God is the biggest God. Right now, that, that's true. That's what I was teaching these people. But I didn't have uh, the vaguest idea that the God he was referring to was a demon-possessed woman. So he said, I want you to challenge my God. And I, I thought, okay, how does he want me to challenge this God? And he said, I'm going to bring my God down and, you are, and you, you are going to face my God. And you know, to cut a long story short, an immediate meeting was arranged between me and that demon-possessed woman. Hundreds of people gathered around me, right, waiting to see me ripped and torn apart by that woman. Because when that woman was coming, all these men were accompanying her and her nails were long like the Dracula, right? <laughs> and, and she had this hair and, and she was so ugly and dirty. And boy, I'll tell you, when she came in front of me, David, have I told you this story before? Praise God. You know, when that woman came to, the, to, to, to you know, right in front of me, she just catapulted herself towards me to rip me into pieces. And then those people held her and said, See, our God is angry with you, so you better run for your life. I said, No, leave her. I said, No, let her go. No, 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 if we let her go, she'll jump on you and she, she'll kill you. I said, No problem. You let her go. And they wouldn't. And then there was this old man who said, Okay, let her go because he says, it's no, no problem for him to die. So if he dies, then we have all these witnesses to say that it was his choice. And when they let her go, she just, you know, no human could fly like that, you know. She just flew at me and I said, in the name of Jesus, stay put. Bang, she landed. I said in my heart, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Mind you, mind you, I was just, I was what, 19 or something, right? I was, this was my fourth church, so this, this, I was 19 by then. So, I was younger than Mark, and you could see Mark, you know, an uncontrollable fanatic. And, and I, 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 <laughs> and I, I was one year younger than Mark, so I was 19, so I was even, you know. So, I wanted to make sure that this demon obeys me, so I said, Sit in the name of Jesus. Oh, the thing sat. I said, get up in the name of Jesus. She got up. I said, thank you, Lord. Sit. Stand up. Sit. Stand up. And now I knew what I'm going to do. I said, everybody. Now there was pin drop silence, okay. Because everybody was shocked to smithereens. They didn't know what was gone wrong to their God. This boy, this boy from the town, you know, wearing sh trousers. This boy has stopped this God of theirs and this God is obeying this boy, you know. So I thought, okay, I'll preach the gospel to them in a nice fashion. So I said, now you. I command you in the name of Jesus to, to nod your head like this for yes and this for no. Then I began to preach the gospel. I said, 
I mean, for every word I said, you tell me, is it yes or no? And I made their God say yes to what yes is and no to what no is. So that these people were confirmed the fact through their God. In fact, indirectly their God preached the gospel to them. <laughs> but afterwards, I cast those demons out. There were 17, right? One after the other. Then she became clean. 70 people were baptized right there. In a stream, we blocked this young boys, ran and they blocked. They said, we want to block. And then, you know, that man, that old man who said, leave, let her go. You know, that man said, you come inside, sir. Now the boy had become sir. Right, sir, you come. So I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you something. Why, why is this part of the testimony? I'm nothing. I'm absolutely nothing. But Jesus is in me. And he is everything. And... If Jesus is, is, is in me, I can do anything. We are talking about Jezebel these days. And you know, yesterday, my theme was, who is Jezebel? Today my theme is, how does Jezebel come? Tomorrow my theme is, what does Jezebel do? Now there is no meeting the day after tomorrow. Aren't we missing something? You may ask, hey Suresh, now you are preaching to us saying who is Jezebel and how the Jezebel spirit is coming and what the Jezebel spirit is doing. But aren't you going to preach us to how we can chase the spirit out? Uh huh. That would be good. Okay, how did Jesus do that? When, when Satan came to deceive Jesus tempt Jesus rather, you know. What did Jesus say? It is written. That's it. So, you know, this chap here is screaming and yelling to prove to us that we have a nice Bible in our hands. We are, we are, we are not like the Chinese people. We are not like the Chinese people who don't have a Bible and if at all they need to acquire a handwritten Bible, they have to memorize Psalm 119, right? You know, that's the biggest chapter, right, uh, of the Bible and they have to memorize it after paying for the Bible. That's, you know, they have to pay and buy the Bible and after keeping it for one week, they have to recite Psalm 119 to keep what they purchased or they forfeit the money they forfeit the bible so praise god god has given us the bible so or i don't have to preach to you to say how you can chase jezebel out you know the mere fact that you are christians is enough for the jezebel spirit to run away from you all you have to do is to say it is written that i am a child of god it is written that i have more authority than you it is written that you are a defeated foe so can you please excuse me? Yeah? Get out! You don't need a, a seminar to teach you how to cast demons out. You know, that is for people who don't have power. Right? If you, if you, if you have a hand grenade and if you all have to, to do is to open the window and throw the grenade away, you don't need a lecture on it. Right? Just open and throw it. So that is why I am telling you that you are very powerful. Okay? Now before I get into the sermon, this is, <coughs> these are my three books on the first three chapters of Revelation for those of you who still haven't seen this. Now, the book of Revelation is a very interesting book and many people have written many commentaries. Now if you start reading this, you will find out that this is completely different. Right now, that's, that's what everybody says about their books. But what I have done is no, what nobody has ever done before. Jesus and John were talking to each other in Aramaic. And that's first century Aramaic, not the Aramaic that you find in the first seven chapters of Daniel. So what I did was, I took the Greek Bible and translated the entire dialogues in the book of Revelation from Greek to Aramaic to understand what Jesus and John were talking and that enlightened me and from 1996 I began to teach the book of Revelation and boy I'll tell you God has blessed so many people so these are there for you and all three books 
come for a price of 10 pounds right but if you can't afford it come and see me we can negotiate but if you want to pay more than 10 pounds pounds you are welcome but please don't pay more than a million pounds because i can't take right but 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 it is not money what happens is uh, the the money with which i get from the english books i print tamil and sinhala books and i give free to those people because my people tamils and sinhalese are poor people right they can't afford to pay now all it costs for me honestly is three pounds okay i spend three pounds so if you buy this set for ten pounds i'm getting seven pounds and with that seven pounds i go to mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> What I do is that those seven pounds, right, uh, will, will, will be used to print the Tamil. So what you are doing is if you pay that money, if you can afford to pay ten pounds, you are buying a set for yourself and you are buying a set in Tamil and a set in Sinhala for some Sri Lankan person. It's not coming to me. That, that's a, that, I wanted to tell that, David, because they don't know that, right? So when you pay 10 pounds, it's actually a profit, you know, I'm, I'm spending. That is why if you can't afford it, I don't want you to buy for some Tamil chap and Sinhala chap. I can still settle with 3 pounds or even free. You know what I mean? Right? Because I want you to get this book and be blessed. And you will be surprised to see the messages for the seven churches. That will blow your socks off your shoes. Hey! <laughs> Which Old Testament passage did that, uh, that expression come from? <laughs> All right, there you go. And there is one more thing which David and I discussed. Now, I, I usually don't talk about money, money. <laughs> right, I don't do that. But uh, here is something that I, I want to, I, feel, I felt today when we were driving up to in Venice. I'm a principal of a theological college which trains people right, to become pastors. 100% of our graduates go into full-time ministry. And the reason why God wanted me to start a Bible college in Sri Lanka, instead of going and uh, working in a Bible college, right now I must tell you that there are Bible colleges that are offering big professorships to me, right, because I have done all these languages, right? Like uh, Jezebel is based on uh, Akkadian language which I used extensively to do the research. So Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic and Akkadian, you know these languages. And I'm a clinical psychologist, right? And I have a PhD in the Old Testament of Bible. So who doesn't want me, right? But what I'm saying is these people want to give big bucks and buy me. But I'll tell you, I'm somebody who didn't even pass my A-level examinations. 13 years ago, I didn't speak English. When I first came to England to study uh, in David Griffith's class, right? We were classmates, right? In your class, we were, we, we, we were in, in, in the same class. In, in fact, you were teaching a lot of people through you, right? You know, we were together in our class and I didn't speak English, right? And uh, even today, English is my third language. And today I'm preaching and teaching in seven languages. So God has blessed me. And God told me, hey Suresh, you were a worm. And I lifted you up to become what you are now. And there are so many people like you in Sri Lanka who need a backup. So you go and start a Bible college. And you know, you would bring the illiterate people and give them, bring them up to a BA level. Or even master's level. Right? In our college, we are offering only up to a, only a BA program, which is four years. Then God said, you bring culprits into your Bible college and transform them to become men of God. Now, you don't want people to come with a good rep recommendation from a pastor plus two non-related referees to say, this is a fine chap. Now, you can keep your fine chaps. Send me the garbage. I'll translate them with the power of the Holy Spirit to become men of God. Right? Then, the Pentecostal fire. You know, when we become academicians, when we, when we become scholars, we do that at the expense of our Pentecostal fire. 
right we question everything afterwards and i remained a pentecostal even after i was labeled a scholar so what i am saying is god told me suresh i want you to start a bible college and produce scholars who are pentecostals who wouldn't compromise my word and my precepts but they'll also be intellectually high up in the society so this and, and and one of the things is that there are so many people i'm calling into the ministry who cannot afford to go to a bible college there is not a single bible college in sri lanka which teaches people free either the student has to pay or the students churches have to pay and those of you who have been to sri lanka you know the poverty in some of those churches so i don't charge fees from any students so if any one of you wants to adopt a student from january we are going to have a intake of i don't know there are so many people who want to come if you want to adopt a student it it costs 30 pounds a month for their total school fees 30 quid a month okay so you can sponsor the whole 30 pounds or 20 pounds or 10 pounds or even 5 pounds for a student whose details you'll be given if you adopt a student and you'll have a communication for the next 4 years to see a culprit becoming a man of god and you'll be part you'll be playing an important part in uh, doing that yes. so i'm opening this you don't have to do that right you don't have to but if you want somebody in the on the other side of the world somebody like me who was going around i know uh, these things are recorded so i can uh, i can't say you know i have done everything but smoking drinking alcohol and uh, and uh, adultery those were the things i didn't do so you can imagine the other things that i did right so i can't say certain things what i what i've done and if that culprit could become a man of god by god's grace at a very young age you can be part of seeing that in some other person's life too okay now this i said because um, i was talking to david about this and extending the the opportunity to you shall we pray Our most gracious loving heavenly father you were with us teaching last night Lord you showed us the tricks and the hidden schemes of the spirit Jezebel and today we pray that you would continue to bless us with what you want us to learn about Jezebel so Lord I commit myself and every one of us in the room and let the holy spirit be the teacher and let us all be hearers and doers of your word may all glory and honor and power be unto you and to you alone at this moment before i close this prayer lord i want to remind the devil that he is nothing but a defeated foe and we are not mere conquerors but we are more than conquerors in jesus name i pray amen now yesterday i explained the evil trinity how satan in counterfeiting god acts as jezebel antichrist and the death and hell and i also told you that there are three babylons of which i cannot teach now but i will teach in the future and you can obviously obtain some of those teachings that which will bless you and i also told you that the name jezebel does not belong to that spirit but that was how the spirit manifested himself or itself ever since we were introduced to a phoenician woman called jezebel so the spirit's name is not jezebel but because jezebel was a very uh, prominent character who was used by this spirit we now identify that spirit as jezebel and most imp- importantly i said very clearly that it is not a feminine spirit because evil spirits are not sexual they are asexual they are neither male nor female 
But also I said that it is wrong to assume that the spirit of Jezebel will go after women or attack women. It also attacks men. Okay. Now I said, the, I explained the four meanings of the one name. And there is a lot of irony here. Because if there is a name that has meanings, diverse meanings, those, mean, those meanings should complement each other. Whereas these contradict each other. Loving kindness, false kind of love and kindness within the church is brought by Jezebel. And where is the prince in you, the pride element? Now do you, do you want to obey the word? Do you want to obey the leaders appointed by Jesus? Why do you have to? Because you are an educated person. You are a rich person. Look at your heritage. You know, where is the prince in you? That pride element is brought by Jezebel. So that God can resist the proud. But the third one is completely ironical. Not exalted. The false humility. Oh, I'm a worm. Oh, I'm nothing. I can't do anything. The deception behind false humility. An artificial inferiority complex. That is all brought by the spirit of Jezebel. And finally I said, the fourth meaning, no husband. The, main, the fourth meaning of the name Jezebel is no husband. And I also said that if there is a spinster, a girl who is not married, she will not be introduced to somebody saying, here is so and so and she doesn't have a husband. We will say she's not married. But to say no husband, the person should have had a husband and perhaps the husband died or they are separated. So I explained as to how this is to do with rejecting the headship and the husbandship of Jesus. Now that you can watch in the DVD. Those of you who were not here yesterday, you can watch in the DVD as to what I spoke yesterday. And today, how does Jezebel come into one's life, one's family, one's society or one's church? Now we all know that Jezebel's spirit is there in many individuals. Not only women but also men. Even inside some pastors and leaders who operate in apparent anointing, the spirit of Jezebel is there. And in homes, many homes, the spirit of Jezebel is there. And in many societies, the spirit of Jezebel is not only there but the spirit of Jezebel dictates terms in some societies. And that same thing could be said of churches too. Many churches are run by Jezebel. Now the question is, how does Jezebel come? Now, we will go back to the Bible. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 16 and see how the woman Jezebel came into Israel. So let's hypothesize that we are the Israel. Of course we are the spiritual Israel, aren't we? So we are the Israel and Jezebel is far out in the Phoenician land and Jezebel is now coming to Israel. So let me turn and I'm going to read from verse 29. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Verse 29. I'm okay now when I have turned. Thank you, thank you, Mark. And in the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and 2 years. So we are talking about a certain king called Ahab, who reigned for 22 years in the nation of Israel, which, to be precise, is the northern kingdom with 10 tribes in it. Okay? Verse 30. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Now, many people would 
assume in, when reading this verse that this verse said something like this. Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all other kings that were before him. But the Bible does not say other kings. It says above all that were before him. Now that includes those who were not kings as well. So, yes there have been sins committed from the garden of Eden. In fact, during Noah's days, sins were committed to the extent where God decided to completely wipe the earth out with a deluge. And there were very evil people like Nimrod. And there were very evil people in the Bible, right? Who even offered human sacrifices, who went on raping people. You know what? Before Ahab, there have been evil people in the world, both in Israel and outside. But the Bible says that Ahab committed sins above all that were before him. So when you read the Bible... Please read the Bible as it is. Understand the Bible as it is. For heaven's sake, don't assume things. The book of Revelation says, if you add anything, the curses that are mentioned in the book of Revelation in the Bible will be added unto you. And if you delete anything from the Bible, the blessings that are pronounced in the Bible will be not yours. You will forfeit them. So this little innocent verse has been assumed by many people to say that Ahab was the most evil king. There were no evil king before Ahab. But the Bible doesn't say that. There was no, above all that were before him were the gravity of his sins. So if you ask me, who was the greatest sinner in the Bible? I would say Ahab. Am I right? Am I talking sense here? Doesn't, isn't that what the Bible says? At least up, up, up until Ahab, Ahab was the evil most fellow. Which tells me that Cain was a sinner all right, but his sin was less than that of Ahab. Okay, And all those people who died during, Noahic, during the Noahic deluge were sinners all right, but they were less sinners than Ahab. Am I making sense here, David? Am I talking the Bible here? It is what the Bible says. So we have to understand what sin he committed. What's that great sin? Verse 31, And it came to pass... As if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now I'm going to explain this verse before we go to verse 32. The first opening that one gives for Jezebel to enter is when sin abounds. When somebody does not put sin away, that's going to open the door for Jezebel. Now I'll tell you, I talked to you yesterday about the demonic hierarchy and I said about the small demons. So when we commit sins, it will open doors anyway to smaller demons. But if sin abounds, and I told you yesterday, that if Satan can entrap you by sending his smallest demons, he'll be satisfied with that. He will not send any demon that is higher than that demon. But if you overcome that, then he sends stronger demons, right? So if you... Live in sin, you have opened yourselves for demons. And the Lord is so gracious, he will tell you that you have a problem in your life. 
So when you go to meetings like this or go to church or listen to the word of God preached by anointed servants of God and when they speak things that will hurt you pointing at your sins please know that God is not condemning you but God is reminding you that you have allowed certain sins to come into your lives thereby opening an avenue for the devil to enter correct yourselves. But there is a spirit of offense now present in the churches. Again an act of the Jezebel. To stop this kind of preaching in the, world, in the churches. So if anybody addresses the sins of people. The people get offended. And that is what we were talking about when we were talking about loving kindness yesterday. And I don't need to elaborate on that. So what happens is in many churches, many meetings and in many sermons. Sin is no more it no longer addressed to the way it ought to. And you innocent people are never going to learn that you have certain sins in your lives which would open the doors for the devil. And what happens is sin abounds. You know sin is capable of reproducing. Sin abounds. One sin leads to another. One sin produces another. So in next to no time, you will find yourselves having more sins. And that's exactly what happened to Ahab. He was finally engulfed by sin. And I want to explain something here in verse 31. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took Jezebel. Okay. So in order to understand that, we got to understand what Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, did. Here is some history for you. Now let me explain this verse, the first part of this verse. It says, Ahab would have been alright if he just stuck to Jeroboam's sins. Whatever happened to Jeroboam would have happened to Ahab. Why? Because Ahab did what Jeroboam did. So Ahab would uh, be punished the way Jeroboam was punished. Okay, But the problem was, he not only did what Jeroboam did, he also married Jezebel. So before we come to Jezebel, we must know what Jeroboam did. Now, after King Saul ruled Israel for 40 years, David ruled the nation of Israel for 40 years. After which, David's son Solomon ruled the nation for 40 years. Okay? So after 120 years of this monarchy in the united Israel, the nation was divided into two. Solomon's son Rehoboam only inherited two tribes, namely Judah and Benjamin. And that became known as the nation of Judah or the southern kingdom. Still having its capital as Jerusalem. And the Jerusalem temple was there in Judah. Okay. But the northern kingdom. Comprising of ten tribes. Retained the name Israel. But they brought somebody else as their king. And that somebody else was Jeroboam. The son of Nebat. Okay. Now Jeroboam during the reign of King Solomon. He was involved in a reprisal and he ex escaped Solomon and he ran and hid himself in Egypt until Solomon died. And the present Babylon is in Iraq. And in the late 1970s, Saddam Hussein, who was involved in a reprisal in Iraq, fled to Egypt. And President Nasser gave him, gave him refugee status until Saddam Hussein could come back and form the Ba'ath Party. Okay. So, we, I mean, in my eschatology, in the books of Revelation, in the forthcoming books, I'm explaining these things very clearly when I'm talking about Babylon and stuff. So, Jeroboam is equal to Saddam Hussein. Later on, Nebuchadnezzar was equal to Saddam Hussein. 
So Jeroboam was equal to Nebuchadnezzar. But Jeroboam was a king of Israel, okay? So he was brought back from Egypt and he was made king over ten tribes. Now he knew that these people, as bad as they are, are spiritual. So the one way to deceive the people of Israel would be on spiritual grounds. So the temple is in Jerusalem. So these people, the ten tribes, are now upset with Rehoboam. But in time they might want to go and worship their God in the temple. So they might start traveling down to Jerusalem. And they may get themselves reconciled with the nation of Judah. So to prevent that, you know what Jeroboam did as soon as he became king? He erected two temples or altars rather. One up in Dan, the northernmost boundary of Israel and Bethel, the southernmost boundary of Israel. Now hang on a minute, For if you know your Bibles very well, you may think, Hey Suresh, the southernmost uh, tip of Israel is Beersheba, not Bethel. Yes, that's the unified kingdom. Now Beersheba belongs to Judah. So the boundary now is up in Bethel. So what Jeroboam son of Nebat did was, he erected two altars, one in Dan and one in Bethel. And he directed the ten tribes to go to these two places and worship two idols. What were the idols? Golden calves. Does that ring any bell? Yes. When these people were traveling from Egypt to the promised land, they all of a sudden missed their spiritual leader for a few weeks when Moses had gone up on to Mount Sinai to bring the commandments of God. So they impelled Aaron to make this golden calf for them. So don't you think that Jeroboam knew this history? Obviously he knew that. But because these people made themselves golden calves to worship, God smote them in their thousands. And still Jeroboam did those very daringly. Christians know what they are doing is wrong. Churches know that there is no connection between darkness and light. And in history they know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom was destroyed because of homosexuality. And Christians who support homosexuals know that. They may pretend to not know that. They may pretend to try to interpret the Bible in their own ways. But they know that. Deep within them they know that. Just like Jeroboam knew that what he was doing was wrong. But still in order to retain his kingship, he did what he did. And then afterwards... Things happened to prove that Jeroboam was wrong. And that was only too well known by Ahab. And Ahab repeats it. This verse says that he did all what Jeroboam did. In other words, my dear friends, he built, he erected golden calves. But I'll tell you, still God was not upset. God was upset. But not upset more and above anybody else because Ahab was an evil man he was born to an evil man called Omri Omri was the man who made uh, Samaria his capital actually he made a town his capital and called that town m the town of Omri so Sam means the city Omri is Omri so Sam Omri which became Samaria okay so Ahab was never a good chap. But God needn't be so upset with Ahab the way he is now. But he not only erected the golden calf, okay? He not only did the sins of Jeroboam, he went and married Jezebel. And now you know from yesterday who came who came in the form of Jezebel. All these things that are written on that little paper. 
okay so here is a secret my dear friends the golden calf was was worshipped in the absence of Moses but when Moses came it was burnt right and if you see Jeroboam did the same thing and if you look at the Bible and if you know the history finally Dan and Bethel were destroyed and Ahab brings those things back which opens the door for Jezebel to come so the first avenue for Jezebel to come as I said is when sin abounds the second avenue for Jezebel to come is when we begin to entertain things that once departed us when we begin to take back things which we once threw away for God you know the spirits of demons will not tempt you with new temptations until they are finished with the old temptations so if you became a Christian after deliverance from so many habits the devil will bring those habits back first before tempting you with fresh or new temptations can you see that so once upon a time the church expelled certain things as evil but the spirit over the centuries it took centuries for the devil to bring those things slowly back into the church perhaps like a sugar coated pill or with a different brand name or with a different coat on do you see that and now many sins that were once expelled from the church such as idolatry witchcraft homosexuality extramarital sex premarital sex and immorality incest um, pedophilia and all these things are now coming back in different names and the churches are now supposed to tolerate them and let them be brought back can you see that and that is opening up avenues for the spirit of Jezebel so when Jezebel comes I'm going to the the next one here now verse 31 he took to wife Jezebel the daughter of Ethbal king of the Zidonians and went and served Baal and worshipped him again I must encourage you to stick to the word there Baal now who was Baal when Moses and the people of Israelites came to Jordan God showed Jordan to Moses and Moses died right and Joshua became the king uh, the, the leader rather and when Joshua went and captured the promised land little by little they eliminated the worship of Baal from that promised land Baal was the Canaanite deity Baal means Lord so if you translate Yahweh or Yahweh is Jehovah in English okay if you translate Jehovah into the Canaanite language you will have to call him Baal so Baal is the counterfeit form of our God can you see that and yesterday I told you that Satan is a master counterfeiter so when Joshua and the people went into Canaan little by little by little they kicked these nations away from the promised land and with those people they expelled Baal 
So Baal was out of Canaan. But you know Jezebel was from Sidon. Right? And Sidons did not worship Baal. They worshipped a deity called Melkart. Okay? And now Jezebel is going to get married to Ahab. Now Ahab goes and serves Baal. And if you really look at that Baal, you will be, you will, you, if you know the history very well, you will be surprised to, you, you, you will have a problem there. Excuse me, now he should have worshipped Melkart, okay? So why did he worship a Canaanite god when he went to Sidon where Melkart was the god? Am I making sense here? For that I did some research and I found out that Jezebel had married Baal and Melkart and called that god Baal Melkart. So ever since the coming of Jezebel, if you read, if you see the term Baal, just know that it is to denote Baal Melkart, not the Baal which was expelled from Canaanite religion. Of course, that's the same Baal, but with an added partner. Now the husband and wife come. Can you see that? Baal Melkart. So he marries the Sidonian woman and he brings back Baal which was once expelled from this land with another new deity. Now I'm going to shock you with something. Look there. In that verse it says, he served Baal and worshipped him. It doesn't say that he worshipped Baal and served him. It says he served Baal and worshipped him. Serving and worshipping are two different things. I can serve you and still not worship you. How can I serve you? From a little way to a big way. Okay? If your book falls, I can serve you by picking that book and giving back to you. And you'll be pleased with me. Okay? And if you find it difficult to walk, I can just give you a hand, thereby serving you. But I, I'm not worshipping you. Ahab did not worship Baal first. He served Baal. Perhaps, perhaps when Jezebel and the whole caravan is now planning to go into Israel, maybe Ahab also gave a hand to put those statues onto the cart. Okay? Maybe in your life, when some of these evil objects are there, in a, in a place, wherever. Maybe you serve those objects with the good intention of helping people. I must qualify that. I must qualify that. Down in Sri Lanka, you get religious artifacts belonging to various religions, Buddhists, Hindus, and you know. But you know, religious artifacts are demonic, can't they? Some people who visited me, some Christians who visited me in the past. You know, when they wanted to buy these artifacts, I tell them, no, you don't buy them. Because they are religious. And I know some of those people have told me, but look at the person, he's an innocent fellow. By buying this, I'm helping that man's man to come out of poverty perhaps. Okay? And some people would say, what is wrong with a beautiful artifact? You know, it's innocent. In, in, in a house uh, down in Germany, when I went, I saw a serpent, a Chinese dragon, was there on the wall. And I asked them, why did you put this? Oh, it, it, this is not religious, it is just a Chinese emblem. So, you know, when people open themselves up 
to serve these things, they open the door for Jezebel to come. Do you understand? It is not easy to live as Christians because the Jezebel is all what Jezebel wants is a tiny loophole to come. And we must be very careful about the things that once left our church, left our uh, lives for the gospel. When we became Christians, we we smoking, right? And, and, and various other addictions. I know of people who came out of these things by expelling these things when they became Christians. After a few years, they go back to that and then they have other reasons to tell me. Oh, you know, I am suffering from depression, they would say. Oh, you know, my husband is persecuting me. Where, where, where can I turn, they say. Huh? Oh, I don't have anywhere to go. That's why I, I, I'm doing this, they say. Oh, this is giving me at least a little bit of pleasure and I can forget the worries of my life, they say. But unknown to them, they are opening the door for Jezebel. So Jezebel comes when sin abounds and Jezebel comes when we begin to serve these demons. But if we start to serve these demons, we start to worship them in next to no time. That's exactly what happened to Ahab. So if you start to tolerate these things in your homes, I'll tell you, if the television program is telecasting some evil stuff, and you may feel that it's not a problem. It is after all a television program. You know, I mean, we, just because we are Christians, we are not going to worry about everything that's going on. Oh, no. Those things can open doors for the spirit to come into your lives. Finally, when you respect objects, when you respect objects more than they deserve, Jezebel comes in. Right? Now look, now this microphone is an object. Now this uh, paper is an object. Now I, I can just drop this paper, no problem. But I can't drop the microphone like that because it will break. So, each object has a way that we need to treat. You understand? So if I try to treat the paper like the microphone, I am giving more respect to the paper than it deserves. Shoes are important. Watches are important. But you don't leave the watch near the door. And keep the shoe under your pillow. Am I right? So that is why I am saying certain objects need to be treated the way they are to be treated. And if we treat them more than they are, what they deserve, that will open the avenue for Jezebel to come. So be careful as to what objects. Now when we went to a, 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 a cathedral yesterday, right? Dunkel Cathedral. We saw demonic objects inside. And it appalled me. You know, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I was so upset because some of those objects, some of those symbols are Hindu objects. And I was a Hindu myself. And I see that inside the church. And next to that, you know, in another place is written, I am the way, the truth and the life. Hang on a minute. Parallel to the words of Jesus, parallel to the words in the Bible, are objects which belong to the devil. Maybe in your homes, it's like that. Maybe in your cupboards, it's like that. Maybe in one part of the cupboard some people keep the Bible and on the other part they have pornographic materials which will open doors for the spirit of Jezebel to come. And this is just an example that I am giving. So Jezebel 
can come in this manner. Now I, I know that you all are too tired today. I'm, uh, as that's why I said this is the final. But tomorrow I will not care whether you are tired or not. If you come, I am going to finish the 12 points that I have for tomorrow. As to what the Jezebel spirit does to people, to churches, to societies and to homes. There are 12 things that the spirit does. And that I am going to share. And today is just the bridge between what I spoke yesterday and what I am going to speak tomorrow. And this is only a small lecture because you are intelligent people and those who are going to watch this are intelligent people. And these are the ways in which Jezebel comes. Please know that nobody can send Jezebel to your houses through uh, witchcraft or anything. If you stand good in your rela relationship with God, nobody can do anything and send the spirit of Jezebel to you. So don't think that, you know, people are doing charms and witchcraft and stuff and that is why the spirit of Jezebel is coming. No. The spirit of Jezebel will come only when we open the avenues. When sin abounds and when we start to entertain the things which we once had. The weaknesses, the addictions, the problems. And when we start to, to serve the, the, the evil spirit by allowing and tolerating and by giving more respect to anything, objects or persons than they deserve. Even a, I'll tell you, it's even appalling. Sometimes some people treat the pastor more precious than their Lord. Sometimes, sometimes they are children. Sometimes they are spouses. Sometimes some scholar. I know that some people would even dare to read some books by preachers than the word of God. See what I mean? Of course if somebody writes a good book, read. That's a different story. But some people would even make that the Bible over and above the true Bible. You know, some people, so one person asked me in a country, he asked me, uh, can I do this? And I said, you can't do this. Man, the Bible says you can't do that. Marrying a heathen, you know, that was the issue. And then he says, no, I, 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 I will ask that. And he mentioned the name of a very big television evangelist. And the next time I went to that country, that person said, oh, you know what, pastor, you told me that it is not uh, good. But you know, that, uh, he, he, that evangelist wrote to me and said, it is okay if you do it prayerfully. So I did it. And I said, I showed you from the Bible. You just disobeyed. So for you, that television evangelist's words are more greater than the Bible. See what I mean? You, we can give more honor and more respect to anything. On that note, I must say, if, if, if somebody tells you a prophecy, if somebody tells you, that's coming tomorrow, okay? This is coming tomorrow, but this is just an example. I'm talking about this tomorrow. If somebody tells you a prophecy, and you know, it may be very nice, but if it is contrary to the scripture, that's Jezebel. And if you, if you receive that, you're opening the, if you, you're, you're opening the door for Jezebel. I'm tomorrow. Tomorrow is glorious, right? If you thought yesterday was glorious, no. Tomorrow is going to be the glorious because you're going to see the ways, the 12 ways how Jezebel is going to manifest or work in our lives, homes, societies and the church. You need to hear that. And I wish and I pray my dear people who are listening to this word through television or through word or to, through, uh, through, through the CDs or directly here. Please do not open yourselves 
your homes and your churches to Jezebel because Jezebel cannot be sent only when you open the avenue can the spirit of Jezebel come in Jezebel is a powerless spirit if anybody tells you that Jezebel is powerful tell them that's a lie Jezebel is powerless it's evil all right but it's powerless Jezebel cannot force itself into your lives. Only when you open the avenues, like Ahab did, that Jezebel can come into your lives. So, if there is sin in your lives, when God reminds you of your sins, repent, clean yourselves, repent, come back to the Lord. Don't let that remain then until the next day because it will reproduce. Okay? And don't allow your friends or your family or anybody to bring into your homes the stuff that once you eliminated. Even when you see those things, keep out of those things. And don't give honor and respect to anything and anybody over and above what they deserve. Because then Jezebel will come in. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Suresh, bless you. Thank you for an awesome message yet again. Removal of the real church in Scotland that the compromised church has been taking over and the remnant needs to stop.